Hello and welcome to Attack of the Famiclones HD. In this installment, I'm talking about the Gen X by Retrobit. So here's the console itself, and here is its box. So the Gen X by Retrobit, the hybrid twin console for Genesis and NES games. This obviously is a Famiclone and Sega Genesis um, on a chip clone all in one. So, this is kind of interesting that Retrobit would make this, since this is a dual console that does not include the Super Nintendo, which usually these systems are, you know, tri-consoles where they do Genesis, NES, and SNES. But this one, it's just NES and Genesis, so yeah. Anyway, uh, let's look at the back of the box here. So, this goes over its features, comes with two controllers, uh, two cartridge slots, uh, power switch version 2.0, which means that it has uh, a mode between 8-bit and 16-bit, so you can have actually two cartridges put in at the same time and then choose which one you want because power will only be uh, will go to one side of the board, not the other. And it has an easy reset, which simply means it has a reset button. Uh, so the box says. Your old glory days of Sonic the Hedgehog and Streets of Rage have returned. The Gen X console is compatible with almost any of your old Sega Genesis cartridges uh, and includes two controllers, an AC adapter, a set of AV cables. The Gen X offers the best of both 8 and 16 bit worlds. Take a trip down memory lane because this console is now compatible with 8 bit NES cartridges. So there it talks about uh, its features for the NES side. Uh, it's compatible with most Sega Genesis cartridges, and that basically means that it doesn't work with um, stunt or er, um, virtual racing, uh, which uses like a special cartridge. It doesn't work with the uh, 32X and doesn't work with the Sega CD. But uh, you know, virtually every Genesis game will work with. Uh, will also work with the Master System Power Base Converter. Um, yeah, so that's the box itself. There's the system, but, uh, yeah. So now let's go over uh, the system itself in more detail. So the thing is basically an oversized um, uh, Model 3 Genesis, Genesis 3 by Majesco, sold, this, sold it around 1996 or so. Um, this is bigger than that because it has to also accommodate the NES slot in the back, but it's more or less very similar. Um, similar shape, similar weight, um, similar build quality. This actually isn't too bad uh, for a clone. This is, you know, nice and thick plastic. Now the cartridge bays are, you know, nice. It's got, you know, both the Genesis slot there, which will also work with uh, Japanese Mega Drive games. It's big enough to accommodate that. Um, and also um, your NES games here. Uh, so yeah, so there's its dual power switch, which, you know, switches between the two different modes. So you can clearly tell which way the uh, this middle slider is, if it's towards the 8-bit side, the NES side, or the 16-bit, which is the um, Genesis side. And these two LEDs will light up, either red or the green, or none at all. Uh, then it's power button. At the front, it's got uh, these two DB9 um, controller ports. And these look like Sega Genesis controller ports, but actually they're not. Now, the reason for this is because the Sega Genesis controller uses a special type of DB9 that was um, basically used as a multiplexer where it has a, basically a control chip inside of it because standard DB9 controllers only support the D-pad and three buttons. And the Genesis actually has four. You might not think it does, but it has three buttons here and a start button. So there's no way to do this with standard DB9. So Sega had to come up with a special control chip inside of the Genesis controller, um, which makes it proprietary for the Sega Genesis. Now, if it was not copied over for, um, for the Gen X for a specific reason, and that is because um, in China and you know, most Asian nations, um, a far more common and cheap um, standard to use is the Famiclone standard. And that is um, controllers that are typically typically used for Famiclones. Uh, this thing has its DB9 uh, controller ports here, um, but these are actually wired for Famiclone controllers. 
and that means that you can hook up like a regular standard Famiclone um, controller into these things and use a Famiclone controller. But again, the Genesis controller um, and the NES controller are, you know, uh, the NES controller only has four buttons at most, and you know that's fine for the three-button Genesis controller. But what about the six-button Genesis controller? Well, uh, they actually found a way around this, and it's kind of interesting. So here is the, uh, the clone console controller it comes with. So it actually is very much similar to a Model 3 Genesis controller, uh, or, the, or the, the 6 button Model 2 Genesis controller, I should say, that came with the Genesis Model 2 and the Model 3. Um, its build quality is actually pretty high considering it's a, it's a clone controller. I'm actually quite surprised with this. This is much better than, say, for instance, the Hyperkin um, Retron 3 controller. Um, that thing is a piece of junk compared to this. The D-pad feels very similar to a standard um, six-button Genesis controller. The buttons feel a little bit more mushy. They're very much loud. You can hear that when you press them. Um, it's got the A, B, C, X, Y, Z buttons. Um, it's got, you know, your, um, your start button, but it's also got a select button and a slow motion and uh, a slow motion button here. And those are a little bit weird. The slow motion is basically turbo start, so you can like press that and then it's like pressing start over and over and over and over. So that works with a few Pacific games, but doesn't work usually well with most games. But what the hell is with the select button? Well, actually, that's because this one controller works with both the NES and the Genesis side. It doesn't just work with the Genesis side, even though this is like a Genesis clone controller. Um, and the way it does is because this, despite its end, is actually a clone Super Nintendo controller. Yeah, that's right. Get that through your head. This is a clone Super Nintendo controller. And the, way, the reason that they did that is because the Famiclone standard is actually um, the same standard as used in the Super Nintendo. The Super Nintendo and the NES uh, Famiclone, um, Famicom share the same basic control chip, the 4021. Uh, that basically means that this is, in, inside of this, despite looking like a Genesis controller, it has all the buttons of the Super Nintendo controller. You know, it has your, your, um, your A, B, your A, B, Y, X, and L, R buttons, and then your start and select, and then your, you know, your D-pad. So that covers all your, all your Super Nintendo uh, controls. And that means because the Super Nintendo controller is backwards compatible with the NES controller, you, they could design one controller and use the Super Nintendo standard and have it work with both the Genesis side and the, SN, er, and the NES side by having one clone controller. And that, this is why you can't use a standard Genesis controller because that uses, you know, Sega's multiplexer and this uses the Famiclone standard um, taken from a Super Nintendo controller. It's kind of also interesting to note that um, looking at its, at, at, at its uh, plug here, that it's angled on the bottom. You see those little grooves there? If you look at an actual Sega Genesis controller or any, any other standard, gen, or set, standard uh, DB9 controller, you'll see it is not angled. So, there's the Genesis controller on the, uh, on the right and the clone controller on the left. You can see the bottom there. See how it's angled? This means that this actually won't physically fit inside of the Gen X because the Gen X has these little slot grooves. So the uh, the clone controller will slide directly into it, but the uh, the Genesis original will not, or you know a 2600 controller or anything else. Um, so, like I said, it will run both your NES, NES games and your Genesis games, and they fit in, you know, very easily. Simply plug them in. Just like that. They wiggle around a little bit, but, you know, they're not going to go anywhere. And, uh, very pleasantly surprised to find that this thing does not have very strong death grips. Getting games out just takes a little bit of little bit of elbow grease, you just got to pull to the one side and pull to the other side, and you sort of wiggle them out. You don't want to pull directly up because, you know, that would like, be completely stupid. That's not how you t remove games. Now, something else I should mention is the back of the system. Now, the back of the system has uh, your standard AV inputs, but it does not have S-Video. 
And that's sort of a shame because the Genesis side would look far better if it had S-Video, but even though it's only composite, um, the NES side looks very good, and actually the Genesis side surprisingly does look good as well. Its DC input is, um, is basically the same as a, as a Famiclone's. Um, it's 9 volt, 300, um, 300 milliamps. Um, center pin negative, so you want to make sure you're not using like an NES power supply or something like that because yeah, it would destroy the system. Um, it's got this OJ switch here, and that means overseas or Japan. Um, this is a switch for your region lock in your Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive games. Um, this allows you to play either North American or Japanese Mega Drive game, or North American Sega Genesis or Japanese uh, Sega Mega Drive games. It does not have a European mode, so if you have a, any PAL games, they probably won't work unless they're you know the early ones that were that didn't um, they didn't care if they were played on an NTSC machine. Now, likewise, um, your NES slot here is just NES um, 72 pin. This is not a Famiclone um, slot that has a 60 pin slot. So if you have a Famic if you if you have any Famiclone or Famicom games, um, Famicom games won't actually run without an adapter. And likewise, European games will run screwy on this because it's um, it's an NTSC machine and it runs at 1.79 megahertz. The NES side does, um, so it's not running at your 1.66 megahertz for PAL. So your games will be basically 17% faster than they should be if you play if you try and play PAL games on this. Um, as well, you know, European power supplies, you know, they're 220 volts out of the wall. Uh, this thing operates on uh, 120 volt range, 110 to 120 volt. So you know, you if you if you're European, you'll need a step down converter for this. Um, so yeah, that's basically going over the system itself. Now, one thing I should mention is um, the controller. Uh, find that controller is very, very strange in, a, in one way. Um, using it as a, set, as a Sega Genesis controller is completely fine because, you know, you have your A, B, C, X, Y, Z buttons here, just as they are, you know, just as, as they're labeled and just as they should be on a, for a Sega Genesis controller. But using it all as an NES controller is extremely baffling because, for whatever reason, uh, the controls are completely messed up. You have the select and start buttons being proper here, but you have the A button, the NES A button, mapped to the Genesis A button, which means this button. And you have the NES B button mapped to this button. This is actually completely backwards from a, actually a real, um, a real NES controller. So if I grab a real NES controller, such as the, the dog bone here, you'll notice that it's B, A. It's not A, B. So on the Genesis, it's, it's A, B. So you have your A button, which is typically your jump button. This is your typically your shoot button, and that they're they're backwards. So that's infuriating. That you know, it's like trying to play Super Mario Brothers with the backwards um, controllers, or playing Mega Man, or you know, whatever. It's like the same kind of bullshit that uh, Mega Man Anniversary Collection had. So you have your A button. You have a Turbo A button mapped to the um, back to the X button. You have the B button, you have a turbo uh, B button, then you have A and B together, so if you press the C button, it's like pressing A and B, it's just like these two together. And you have turbo um, A and B mapped to the Z button. Very, very baffling. However, there is a solution. If you want to play NES games, you don't actually have to use this, despite it being sort of proprietary. I have found a, a novel solution for this. Now, you might remember um, a while back, I had posted a review of the, uh, of the Mayflash SNES to, uh, SNES to Genesis, or SNES uh, and NES to Wii adapter. Now, I have um, it, it, the, the 2.0 version, the second one that I bought, came with this thing right here. What this is, is it, is it adapts... Um, a standard NES 7-pin controller to the Famiclone um, DB9 standard for that adapter. Now if you slightly take a knife and slightly dice around the edges here, this now will fit into the Gen X. So we're going to do that, we're going to fit that in. Yep, just like that. And now, 
with this side, I can then plug in any standard NES controller I want, such as the NES004, you know, the standard rectangle controller, or the NES101 controller, which is the dog bone. So, just to prove that, I'm going to take its cord here, and go and plug that into the Gen X. So now I, I can play a, a Sega Genesis or NES game, it, it doesn't matter, I could use either format, with a standard NES controller on the Gen X. And now I don't have to worry about using, you know, the somewhat flimsy, weird control scheme of the uh, stock controller it comes with. Now, these kind of adapters I don't think are ever sold on their own. Um, so if you want one of these, you know, you can buy the Mayflash um, SNES or SNES and NES to Wiimote uh, adapter that Mayflash sells, and that will come with one of these things. I don't know if you can buy these things on their own because if you can, you know, that would be great. You don't have to buy that adapter, but it's a good adapter. Um, yeah. Um, something else I should mention is uh, there's another way to get around uh, using that because the NES controller only has you know the the four buttons and so what if you what if you're playing a Genesis controller and you just don't like the standard controller that the uh, the, the Gen X comes with if you don't like this thing well there's actually a way that you can use a real Super Nintendo controller to play Sega Genesis games because it actually uses the Sega Gen or uses the Super Nintendo controller port standard, like I said before, for the Genesis slide. Um, <laughs> it's it's baffling, but yeah, it's there's a way to do this. If you actually take this adapter, which is the um, the Mayflash SNES or, or SNES and NES to Wiimote, uh, little little double adapter here that allows you to plug in an NES controller into the DB9 standard. You then can plug that into the system. Then, if you're crafty and have uh, designed something, let's see, where did I put that? Nope, not that. Hmm. Ah, here it is. Now, if you're crafty, um, you can actually build yourself a little adapter like this out of two uh, extension cords here. And this now will plug into the NES side, and out the other side is a Super Nintendo adapter. Because again, like I said before, the 4021 is backwards compatible, so you can plug a Super Nintendo controller and use it on an, and on an NES, which is what I've done here. So I've actually gone and sliced this down in half, so you can see there, it's my, my little uh, cut here. Take that, plug that into, the, uh, into this adapter, and through this lengthy process, then go and take your standard Super Nintendo controller, take its... Uh, Take its plug here, and then plug that in, and that allows you to use a Super Nintendo controller to play either your NES side or your Genesis side using an authentic Super Nintendo controller. Um, using this authentic Super Nintendo controller, the co mappings are: you have your um, your A, B, C, um, you have your your X, Y, and Z buttons. So it's a little bit strange, but you know nothing too bad. So, yeah, that's basically it for this overview video. Um, I'm going to post this in three different parts. The next part, I'll talk about the NES uh, section. And then after that, I'll talk about the Genesis section. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions in this first overview part, uh, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. And once again, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.